Today, another bombshell suggests empirical evidence of black biological inferiority, the bell curve. A book by Charles Murray and the late Richard Herrnstein cited statistics, alleging that blacks on average score 15 points below whites on IQ tests. They compared averages, not individuals, the authors asserted. True, because some of the highest test scores ever registered on IQ tests were made by blacks. However, the author's premise reinforces the racialist eugenics theory of African inferiority. We invited Charles Murray to present his views on this program. He refused. But joining me to examine this issue is the woman who took on Dr. Shockley and his views on Aryan superiority. I'm Tony Brown. We'll be back with Race and Intelligence. My guest is Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, a psychiatrist and author of ISIS Papers, The Keys to the Colors. Dr. Welsing, welcome back to our series. After 20 years, I'm I'd like to say that uh, Dr. Shockley's premise is as vivid today and as alive as it was when we did that program in 1973. Precisely. And his premise sounds, uh, to, seems to be the, the, the father of Charles Murray's uh, the, the, the bell curve. Do you agree with that? Well, I wouldn't say that it was a father. It's in the continuing wake of the discussion, the historic discussion of black genetic inferiority. I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, we were being bombarded with uh, violence in the black community as related to black people's genetics, but not anybody else's violence being related to their genetics. And so now Charles Murray is coming out in Richard Herrnstein, that black genetic inferiority. And as a matter of fact, Tony, I'm very happy about it. The reason being is that 24 years ago, in my paper, The Crest Theory of Color Confrontation and Racism, White Supremacy, I said that the population that classifies itself as white has to continue to focus on color, genetics, sex, and numbers. And so 24 years after having made that statement, here we go again. So I'm not uh, at all surprised, and I'm glad to have the Crest Theory again validated. Now, in, uh, in both Dr. Shockley's uh, conclusion and in the Bell Curve's conclusion is the uh, conclusion that uh, blacks are uneducable and that public policy needs to be shaped to understand, to conform with the, quote, fact that no amount of money is going to rehabilitate or habilitate, whichever you choose, black exactly. people in this country. Exactly. What are the implications? Well, I think, again, the implications, first of all, we need to understand that this discussion doesn't occur in the vacuum. It occurs within what I call a global, national, local system of white supremacy. Now, what do I mean by that? I maintain and have for the past quarter century that the behavior that we see, including this focusing, comes about because the white population on the planet is a tiny minority population. It's not people of color who are the minorities. Whites are fewer than one-tenth of the population on the planet. Number two, and perhaps most importantly, white. Do You see, when white people say, I am white, they are talking genetically about a genetic recessive characteristic that is a variant of albinism, not defined by Francis Welsing. Now, that genetic recessive characteristic plus the minority status means that the white population can conceivably be genetically annihilated by genetically dominant black, brown, red, and yellow people in terms of skin coloration. So my thesis in the Crest Theory was that all of the behavior, you see the repression of blacks, the attack on black males in particular, the lynching, the castration, the obsession with saying something is wrong with your genetics because at a subconscious level, whites are aware we are the population on the planet that is genetically vulnerable. Now, let, let me give you one exception that I know of, and that is Brazil. Uh, during slavery in Brazil, racism as a premise for slavery was as uncommon as racism was a premise for slavery 
in the United States. And in a, in a Brazil, the white population is diminishing and the black population is diminishing and the population in the middle, which is a miscegenated population, is the one that's growing. So I think well, there... Well, but see, I would say, Tony, that still, if now, you that's go... That's finish one point. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, and my point, I, I'm not trying to cut you off, but mm -hmm. I think my point is, I don't want to sound too abstract, my point mm -hmm. is that in some parts of the world, whites don't seem to be as fearful of what you call, referred to as annihilation, perhaps, as in the United States. Well, I would still say if one goes to Brazil... And if you go and see who controls the banking centers, it will be a population of people that say oh, we a, are white. That's, 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 you see, yeah, and right. at the same time, if you go to yeah. the favelas and into the slums, yeah. do you see, you see the darkest and the blackest and population. The only, and, and you're right. And the only thing I'm saying is that that population and that population culturally is very different from the United States. And, and, and racism wasn't the premise for slavery there, but it was the premise for slavery in the United States. Well, you see, I say that there, in other words, there are various, there are variations on the theme. Mm -hmm. There's variation in terms of the particular language that the discussion is carried out in. But you never get away from, if you're black, stay back, brown, stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right, you mm -hmm. see, and the more color you have to cause white genetic annihilation, then the more pressure that is put on you. So this hierarchy of color, whether you're in Asia, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Latin America, Central America, this still obtains, but I don't want us to get lost. No, okay, I, I don't, I, but I do want right. to get back to a, a, a primary point here, because I think we've, we've jumped over it, right. and that is the bell curve, and let me just say this, it's not just the bell curve. The week that the bell curve came out, two other books came out on the same subject, mm -hmm. and they've had so much success. The cover of Time Magazine, Newsweek, U.S. News and World Report had a feature story, New York Times, two weeks in a row, yes. very prominent play. The media just grabbed onto this idea. Now, with this happening, there's going to be a plethora of books on this very, very subject. Precise. Now, in this new wave, unlike Shockley and Jensen, to a lesser extent, the focus is on, quote, data meaning that someone is empirically saying that they can demonstrate that there is biological inferiority among blacks and that it, it turns on one statistic and that one statistic is that blacks make an, on average and they were careful to say not individuals but average because it never could have gotten off the ground with individuals because too many black individuals uh, are, are exceptions to, the, to this rule but on average blacks make 15 points less than whites now what is your direct refutation of that alleged empirical evidence? Well, do you see, I would say this, that first of all, I'm a psychiatrist, a general psychiatrist, child psychiatrist. We've always looked at IQ tests as being very directly related to the environment. Now, if someone doesn't want to closely examine the environment, all of the dimensions of the environment, then someone could easily say, well, it's not the environment that makes the difference. You see, I maintain that it is the environment that makes the difference. And on Sunday, the uh, recently, an uh, article was in one of the major newspapers in Washington, D.C., where a young white male, senior at the uh, University of Maryland, had his skin darkened, and he went to the South. He could have stayed in Maryland, but he went to the South. He was going to be black because he did not believe when blacks would say it's racism, it's racism. He thought that that was really just an excuse. So he had his skin darkened by a dermatologist, and he went to the South, and he could only tolerate the oppression for two days before he came running home and crying to his mother, I can't deal with it, no, I no. can't deal with it. Now what I'm saying is that here is someone who can, you know, the chemical is not given and so he turns back white. He knew he had that escape, but he still, he couldn't tolerate the insults in the restaurant, the, the various day to day, 24 hours a day, seven day a week, assaults that a person of psyche. color on his psyche that the person experiences. Not physically. Not physically, but psychologically. you see, but it's not generally talked about. Mm -hmm. You see, in other words, he talked about such things as being ignored when he would go into a restaurant, do you see, or someone saying uh, niggers are, you know, no good. Mm -hmm. Just on and on and on and on, now, a that's continuous. One that, that overt racism 
overt Well, I won't even call it overt. Oh, okay. But I might call, do you see, uh, shooting or lynching overt, but mm -hmm. I'm talking about the very subtle things. All right, all right. I, I, and, you're, and you're right. What I would like to do, however, is to identify some other environmental factors that would contribute to this 15-point gap. You've identified one, okay. uh, the, the subtle uh, erosion of, of self-esteem, uh, the, 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 the subtle psychological implantation of uh, the feeling of inferiority, which must manifest itself somewhere under some circumstance. But apart from that, what are some of the other environmental factors that well, you can identify? Well, if we understand racism is a system that is operative in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And so this barrage, full court press, is coming at you on a daily basis. If it impacts economics and labor, this means, as is the case in large numbers of black families, you're talking about a one-parent family as opposed to a two-parent family. You're talking about disparage in, uh, uh, inadequacies or inequities in terms of wages. And all of this begins to impact on what it is that is happening in that critical unit that we call the family unit. And if that unit cannot function in a supportive manner, for example, black infants, when they are born in the first nine months of life, are accelerated compared to white infants. Now, how are they accelerated? How well, do you mean Well, they're accelerated in terms of such things as smiling, holding up their heads, recognition motor of activity. faces, and motor activity. Do you see? And smiling is also intellectual activity. But with the assault of this environment in a highly structured environment that I say is structured for the purpose of white genetic survival, uh, do, do you see that? Yeah, yeah. This begins to then take its toll. It's as though you have two races, two people running a race. Mm -hmm. One, you tie weights around their ankles. And everything else is equal, but one has weights tied around his or her ankles. I've seen a number of studies, and frequently, they, they seem to cluster around something happening to a black child around seven years of age. Have you, have you identified that age at all? Well, I see it everywhere. Around seven, something happens to the black child. They grow tremendously up to that point, and then all of a sudden there's a, there's a fall. -off. Well, you see, the child has entered school at that point. And upon entering school, I mean, try to think about, when I think about what first grade was like, mm -hmm. do you see, it was mm -hmm. Dick and Jane and Spot and Puff, mm -hmm. and a white family. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything about a black family. It was a white family, all the pictures were white, all the presidents were white, everybody that you focused on that was doing anything, Goldilocks, Snow White, everybody is white, including a white Christmas, a white bunny rabbit. Do You see, so that the child be, is taking all of this information in about the environment and how he or she is valued or looked upon in the environment. Just learning the English language. You learn that white is pure and black is evil, black is bad. If the stock market falls, it's a black Tuesday or a black Monday. Right, the bottom line, does a 15-point disparity on IQ exams make blacks genetically inferior? Well, I would say absolutely no. Do you see, we want to get down to genetics. White is a genetic mutation from black. It is albinism. The earliest people, the first people on the planet were black people. And black people produced albinos. And you mix the two together, you get the whole human family. So I say, no, it doesn't mean that. But I want to move. Let's assume for the purpose of argument that let's say black people are 50 points below white people. Do you see, according to their tests, the bottom line is, okay, Dr. Murray, Dr. Jensen, Dr. Shockley, Dr. Herenstein, what is it that you intend to do about this? Do you see? Are you saying, therefore, your motto is Adolf Hitler and company? So we have decided that you are inferior. The bottom line is, what are you going to do about it? Because there are many children, white, black, brown, red, or yellow, who are damaged genetically, congenitally. We say they're mentally retarded. Now, we have special schools. We do everything to help these children. We put them in small classes. We give them three or four teachers. We give them all kinds of things to try to exploit the genetic potential. 
But now somebody comes along and says a 15 point difference means we cannot expect anything from these people. Well, if we cannot expect anything and the global economy is declining, well, gosh, we're back with Adolf. Do you see? Well, we just cannot tolerate this debris in our population. If I may, the, in, and I want you to continue your point. I don't want to interrupt. I do want to say this. I read an editorial recently on, uh, on, the, on the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal, not a newspaper to take lightly. And the, 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 the writer was very favorable anti the, the bell curve. This was not a racist writing an article. It was a very, very objective, fair uh, editorial. And he mentioned the eugenics movement mm -hmm. that the Chinese are involved in, in terms of in China, of culling out the bottom and, and reproducing the top. And he concluded that if the liberals kept on making more out of the bell curve than it is, we may see, quote, a Beijing solution in the United States. Well, let's States. not go to a Beijing solution where we have a Nazi Germany solution. Do you understand where? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a population. I mean, there have been many populations if a child is born defective. Do you see? They do not allow that child to go on and exist. That's, That's quite different. Mm -hmm. That's um, quite different than saying there are populations of people. Genocide. Do you see? That are superfluous and that are a contaminant. And we need to be pure and clean so that we can really arrive where we're supposed to arrive. We're back in Nazi Germany. So I say that, first of all, we have to recognize Nazi Germany was about white supremacy. It was about white, the white genetic population feeling that it was vulnerable to an assault by people whose real genetic origin began in North Africa. You see, their religion was not the critical issue. The issue was that they had their origins in a population that was classified as non-white. And so I say that we need to not debate numbers because God forbid, but Dr. Murray or his grandchildren might come out with an IQ difference 15 points lower than his. My next question will operate on the premise uh, that your statement there is, 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 is uh, objective. Therefore, I will go to the next point. If what you're saying is true, are blacks doing anything to accelerate a process toward a, quote, final solution? Well, blacks themselves? No. Do you see, the people of color on the planet who are being approached by people who have all these genetic issues in their minds, and they don't understand, they don't understand that white supremacy mindset or the mindset that is feeling vulnerable to white genetic annihilation, so you have a big population conference in Cairo, to the extent that people of color on the planet do not understand this mindset. It's like being at the chessboard and not understanding the game with all of the people of color on the planet on the black side of the chessboard. And you have white supremacy or the dynamic for white genetic survival moving against this group of people. Now, I believe instead of getting emotionally upset about Charles Murray's position or anybody who is in that group of thinkers, I believe, again, take out the Crest theory, see where all of this has been laid out before, predicting how this mindset operates, and begin to place oneself in a mode of understanding what the game is that is on the right, table. If, if I can summarize the game, the game is going to turn on public opinion. Hitler only did what he was able to do, and he was only able to do certain things because he had organized German public opinion. What, if anything, are blacks or some blacks doing in terms of accelerating a negative public opinion or a public opinion oh, well, that could okay. come back to bite them. That's All my, right, well, that's let's, my let's take an example. A person who considers him or herself to be an actor, television actor, black, who doesn't understand this white supremacy dynamic. So somebody comes along and offers them a job, you see, but they have to act as a clown and a buffoon, and they just think, well, I'm in the abstract being an actor or an actress unbeknownst to them, it's a whole context in which this role is being carried out, where people feel who have set up this image that they need to be in re reinforced. See, look at blacks. They're clowns. They're stupid. They're buffoons. Look at this. This is trash. Well, let's look at daytime 
television. Look at it for me, will you, with the eyes of a psychiatrist. All right, the daytime talk show. Yes. All right, I would say that there are many black people that are being tapped. I don't know where they go to find these people. Do you see? But it's as if it's the parallel would be if a white person who's putting on a television show decides, let me go and get the least advantaged white person and put them up on the television continuing, not the most beautiful, the most articulate, the most intelligent. No, let me go to the poorest area where there are white people and then put them up continually as a model for what white people are all about. You see, we go back to Nazi Germany and Joseph Goebbels, who understood if we keep putting out negative images of Semites of the Jewish religion, we can train the population to say, look, they're animals. They're not human. And so the sooner we get rid of them, the better. I think that many talk shows are using and trashing black people in this manner, in addition to some of the shows that come on in the evening. I can think of uh, one of the shows that just trashes the image of black men. We complained in the 50s and the 60s and maybe the 40s about the Amos and Andy image. Those are angelic images <laughs> compared to the images of black men, do you see, that are being put on the television and this is supposed to be entertainment. I say no. This you know is what I, I thought was remarkable uh, and I've read it everywhere and that was the reaction of the vast majority of white people to the Clarence Thomas hearings. Not yay or nay Clarence or Anita Hill, but it was, I had never seen so many articulate, intelligent black people before. And well, it was that like, was because they had been indoctrinated with the idea. With, with the kind of uh, you see, images of you're talking about. black genetic inferiority. Yeah. And I would say to the white population, I would say this, that of the people on the planet, some of the people who walk around and have to hold their heads down who are white are people whose origin is German or white South African because they are known throughout the world to have brutalized people. You see, they're ashamed of themselves. And so I would say to white people, it's very important for them to look further than what somebody says is an objective IQ score and begin to hold the mirror up and do self-examination.